I'm, I'm simply saying that life finds a way. Write something on the board. Let's spell it. First letter. L. O. G. What's that? What? It's time. It's time to have real, honest, open, difficult, and inspiring conversations. It's time for Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. There, family, and welcome to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. How are you doing today? Today is Wednesday, April 26th. Do you believe it? And I am your host, Carol Riddick, and I am joined by the incomparable Miss Kayla J, who's making sure everything runs smoothly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out. Um, you know what I like to do right now. You know what I like to do before we get started. I like to inhale, exhale, <laughs> and do a little check-in. You know what I like to do. To our family members on our socials, send us a hello. Let us know that you're out there. And uh, to our family members who are checking us out in other ways, where you can't see us or communicate with us on our socials, that's all right. Just send us a little love because we'll feel that too. You know we will. And uh, for our family members whose light is shining just a little dimly, I'm sending love and hugs to each and every one of you. Also, now we were talking about this the other day because I believe everybody should be celebrated. Okay, if today is your birthday or if I missed your birthday, happy birthday to you. <laughs> and if you'd like me, to say happy birthday to someone special or someone specific, let me know. Shoot me an email. Send me an email at loveandlifeatwordradio.com and I will be sure to make that happen. You know, that's what we do here at Love and Life. We, uh, we demonstrate love in the best way that we can. And we talk about everything under the umbrella of life. So... Before we get into uh, the guest that we have coming tonight, I want to talk to you. I want to find out what you're doing for our upcoming Mother's Day. I, I want to know. I want to know what plans you have, you know, what kind of things you have in the works, all of that good stuff. How about we do this? How about uh, for those who are on our socials, you can send me uh, a message letting me know. And for those who would like to talk, with me and tell me so, you can do so by calling 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. For my uh, ATLians, I think that's how you say it, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'll, I'll be down in Atlanta celebrating Mother's Day, so I hope to see all of you down there. Um. One thing I want to make you aware of, in case you did not know, April is National Poetry Month. And to continue the celebration, we've asked a world-renowned, award-winning poet and creative to join us this evening, you know, just to talk about some things. You know, Tonight's guest is an award-winning poet, creative copyright and creative marketing campaign developer with over... 15 years of experience. Did you hear that? A captivating performer with a pro-family anti-establishment message, he began spreading his words of revolution as early as 1993. 
He worked Philadelphia's coffee house and poetry slam circuit real hard, y'all, earning himself a loyal local following along the way. But at a gig in New York City, none other than hip hop mogul Russell Simmons caught his act and the poet's quest for nationwide recognition became a reality. He went on to appear on five consecutive seasons of the Simmons produced Deaf Poetry Jam on the HBO cable television network, that's right, which led to a starring role in the Tony Award winning Deaf Poetry on Broadway. Family, I invite you to meet the one and only <laughs> Lamar, the legend, uh, okay, Manson, also known as Black Ice. Family, say hello. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, hello hey. there. Hello What's there. Happening? Hello there. Hello there. Yeah. The legendary Black Ice. Hello there. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm wonderful. I'm always wonderful. I know that. I know that. I know that's right. You know, I like to hear you say yeah. it, but I know that's right. Well, yeah, I'm happy I'm, you could join us. Oh, listen, I'm sorry that I, I got, for some reason, it got real quest for fire in here real quick. Okay. And trying to figure out how to get online and just, you know. You said life more. interrupted. Let me tell you, it's one of those days. Y'all, family, okay, I'm going to share with y'all, okay? I'm going to tell all my business right now. Let me tell you something. And that's because, uh, you know, I'm a pretty transparent person. But now today, this morning, now I'm just sharing for anybody who cares to hear this. This morning, Lamar, I'm going to tell you what kind of day. I was having my morning tea because that's what I do in the morning after my reflection and my prayer. Wow. I have my tea before I start my day. I'm having my tea. And a mouse, a oh, mouse, wow. a mouse walked across the floor. <laughs> mm. Wait, wait, wait. What you don't know is that I'm terrified. I'm terrified of rodents. I'm terrified. I have a puppy. Yeah, no, she doesn't see it. I grab her. I say, okay, go upstairs. Because I screamed. She thought, okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? Family, y'all know I'm sharing. You know what I do. So just bear with me. Well, let me tell you this. I couldn't find one person to come to get this mouse out of my house. It stopped. So I thought it died. I thought it died. I called two of my, my friends, two of my good cookie girlfriends. Here they come. They came over. They said, oh, it's not dead. Shut up. Shut up. I almost moved out today. So when you talk about, you know, everything that took place, you talk about hellfire and everything that's going on right now. Just know that I had the, a morning of mornings, okay? Because I'm terrified. That's right, family. I'm sharing with you that I have a rodent, okay? This I'm, baby I'm, walked I'm out like it paid a bill. I'm sorry about that. I was I was just talking about, I just got, I couldn't figure out how to get the computer on. You said, you know, wait, I, I wasn't talking about all that. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But, Listen, you didn't have to put me out no, there like but, that. But, ironically enough, or I was, I killed the mouse uh, like yesterday with the trash can. You well, know. I was terrified. I, I'm not there. I wish I was, but I'm not there. Okay. But, but okay. you know, it's good to have friends who are because they took care of that for me. I, I was freaking out. I screamed and then my puppy screamed. She literally screamed. I never thought in any event, family. Okay. Let me, let me uh, come back to where we are. Uh, some of our family members are joining us on our socials. Nasir, hey there, hey there. He writes, good evening, Sister Carolyn, guest Lamar, peace and blessings. And uh, Raphael, hey there. It's so nice to know that you all are with us. I love it when you check in. I love the love that you share. So Lamar, <laughs> as you I know. gather myself, I shared all my love with you. Uh, you know, as I gather you myself. Good? I'm good. How are uh, you traveling all over? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I know that's what we do, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm good. Uh, just uh, trying to keep up with myself. And, that's not uh, a bad place in which to be. Yeah, you know, just trying to keep up with myself and and stay, try to stay a little healthy and mm -hmm. uh, in good spirits and uh, and creative. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to keep the signal strong. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a ball right now. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot happening. So I want to um, hear all about it. We want to know about everything that's happening in your life. Yeah, right there's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of creating happening. But then there's also just a lot of performing. I'm on tour with Jill, 
right now and I'm opening up not not the entire tour but like maybe I think 11 or 12 dates and um, and that's been uh <laughs> and that's been fun uh <laughs> I mean it's really been fun it's been a thing you know I, I got I got booed uh what? the other night in Nashville hey like I don't I think that's Shut the first time up. I I think that's the first time I've ever been booed in my life. And that's beautiful. Right? Because really? it kind of shook me. It, yeah, it shook me into brand new again. And not like boo, like, like I ain't get booed. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, got, I got you. I got you. you know, but, but just it was a it was a thing, you know, I broke a rule. And uh uh, uh <laughs> like we want jail, you know, and and I engaged with that person, so I disengaged with the audience. And then it's hard mm. to get that back. But I got it back though because the poems are snake charmers. So, you know, yeah. like once that, that cadence, I got I was trying to tell a joke and I heard a ooh, I said, okay, well, let's do poetry then. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I jumped back into it. <laughs> and everybody, by the time I was done, you know, my last line is God gives me what I'm worth. You ain't gonna what you gonna say? You gonna boo me? No, of course not. You know so it was mm -hmm. cool. It was uh, it was good, but for me. Just my spirit, it was like, you know, it just, it was, uh, it, it just, it, you know, it, it, it shook me awake in a, in a, in just a, a real beautiful way. Cause it wasn't a, a, like a, a an extreme, like flop, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like that. It was just, I'm not used to any pushback, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, you know, when, when, when the words is coming through me, I'm not. But I also ventured into a new space, you know. So, you know, it's 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 uh you no, know, it's a it's a, it's it feels good to like uh, be learning again, you know. Yeah. Like I, I I produced a um, I produced a show at American University a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and um, it was uh, Archie the Messenger, K Love, Rebecca Dupas, and Black Chakra, mm -hmm. and I mean these four. These four heavy talkers here, they was, it was, I just love like being in class, right? Like I love, I'm a fan of the art and mm -hmm. I, I forgot like, like watching them, I learned a couple of things. So it's just really, it's really fly to be in this space where I know I'm a master of my craft yet. Uh, but you're still you know, open to I'm learn. Brand, I'm brand new again, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I love that. I, I mean, I think, you know, that's what makes life exciting. That's what keeps it new. Yeah. That's what, yeah. you know, the, it breaks the monotony of things and yeah. it, it the cycle itself. I mean, life isn't ever, you know, it's an ongoing cycle, but the beauty in it is that even though it's cyclical, there are differences, you know, the, the slight little differences that you get in there. They're like gifts. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, I didn't have that the last time I came around this block. You know, oh, yeah. so that's, yeah, I, mean, I love that. I love that. It yeah, keeps us yeah, keeps us art. fresh. Right, yeah, right. As a creative, yeah, because we need well, we need that. We need to, you know, we need things to be fluid. We need all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to jump mm -hmm. for one moment to go back to our socials and say hi to Harry. Harry says, Hey, Absolutely. I'm here, family. I'm here. I'm here. I love it when you check in, family. If you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. We've just begun the discussion with none other than Lamar, the legendary Black Ice Manson. But I know at some point you're going to want to join the conversation too. And if you feel that you want to do so, you know you can call us. You can call us at 215 634 Eight zero six five, or you can call us toll free at one eight six six three six one zero nine hundred. Or if you'd rather not talk, you know you can reach out to us on our socials. You know, you know how to do that, and we love it when you do. So, talking about this newness, this newness. You know, the, the interesting thing is that as long as you and I have known one another, I don't think we've had a conversation for, for more than a few minutes. We always see each other in passing, which is mm -hmm. crazy to mm -hmm. me. Or because I mean, like I feel like at an event, yeah, or... at an event, we always see each other in passing. But I, 
I feel like I know so much more about you than I'm sure I do, <laughs> but because you know, um, just spirit, just our spirits mm-hmm. are familiar, mm-hmm. so, which mm-hmm. I love. I love, love, love. But I love that I constantly see you out there working and in different spaces. You know, I I love that's the beauty of creativity, yeah. but it's also yeah. you know a testament to to who you are and what you're able to do. I have. A question for you. When I was speaking about um, what you do, I said, now I'm going mm-hmm. to ask him, what, what is a, um, a creative copywriter? What does a creative copywriter uh, do? A creative copywriter is um, uh, it's in marketing. And so everything you see in the ads, all the words, you know, that you mm-hmm. see in the ads, you know, all of that, all of that dialogue, that's, that's copy. You know, well, you are and, a master wordsmith, so that makes sense. Yeah, and there are writers, you know, uh, I, I tell it to my students all the time, you know, uh, you know, poet, you know, being a poet is one thing. Like, you know, mm-hmm. being a poet is part of, is under the umbrella of the artist, of the writer that you are. Like, mm-hmm. never, because, and then especially venturing out into, um, into trying to make it, turn it into commerce. Uh, if you're not part of the illiterati, you know, in academia, mm-hmm. you know, because of course there are thousands of poetry festivals and literary festivals that happen all year long, but we don't get invited to them because, mm-hmm. you know, like Shakespeare, academia doesn't celebrate us, mm-hmm. you know, so, and that's cool, you know, so, but, but, so we forge our path in a different way. So in that, it's like, I tell my, I always tell my students, like, I, I learned as I went. I came in as a poet, mm-hmm. you know, signed to a record label, and then opportunity came my way because I always liked advertising. So then somebody asked me to do, a, you know, read a voiceover, and then I got into, okay, well, what else is going on in here? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right, and I'm a creative writer, you know, so it's not, I'm, you know, poetry is an avenue and a, and a, and a, um, you know, a means of expression, but visual arts was my first love, you know, I'm a house head. So, you know, two, three times a week, you know, I, I throw, you know, I throw it on for an hour and just in my own solitude, you know, sweat, like I'm at Houston Hall, you know, so. Houston Hall. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, um, yeah, just being a, a, a a copywriter is just that, just writing ads. I've, I've, and I've written stuff for shit. Heineken, Mercedes Benz, Under Armour. I was a big part of Under Armour's launch into the basketball uh, oh, arena. Nice. Uh, um, other uh, G Star, you know, other boutique companies. So American mm-hmm. Express. Uh, I won a Webby Award for. Uh, a thing I did with Rush Card, so you know it's a it's another it's another art, you know, being able to grab somebody and hold them in aesthetic arrest for fifteen to thirty to sixty seconds, you know. You have always been able to do that. I mean, from the first moment I heard you recite anything, how <laughs> young were you when you began reciting poetry? Mm. I can't. I don't. I don't know. My my elementary school teacher, um, you know, she I had one. I had I had really dope teachers and a and an even doper mom, right? Because my mom was very much about bringing my brothers and I out of ourselves, you know, uh, and and making us, you know, walk the path that we're supposed to walk, which is who we are. So I don't. I never. When people ask me like, when did you get started? I've just always been an artist. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, my and my artist and my art has always been on display, you know, from kindergarten. You know, I painted a mural on the you know, on the wall, uh, John B. Kelly. I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I was always in plays and I was always, the, you know, the, one of the kids, the boys that they caught to, to, you know, battle somebody in pop locking. And then, you know, uh, uh, I was a. Then I, I had a record out when I was 16, you know, so I've always yeah. been, you know, just, I've always been 
uh, an artist and writing has always been a gift. So from elementary school, when my, when Ms. Brooks saw that, oh, he can write. And she told, told my mom, mm-hmm. make him write. So oh, I just goodness. remember always writing, you know. Well, now that leads me to, uh, to ask you um, to tell our family members who are unaware, um, you mm-hmm. know, from where you come and a little about your upbringing. But before you do so, we're going to take a short commercial break. Wait, I see you, Harry. Harry writes that he's also a house head. <laughs> he said, I'm a house head also. Listen, right, family, right. we're going to take a short commercial break. But stay with us, okay, because we will be right back. Jeff Brown, as you know by now, is a grocer who used his ShopRite supermarkets to address food deserts. His stores now feed about a quarter of all Philadelphians. More, Jeff started a program to hire the formerly incarcerated. His stores employ over 500 returning citizens. Jeff's solution became a national model for combating a food crisis and poverty. During COVID, when city government shut down, Jeff Brown raised money to support over 1,100 small businesses. He kept neighborhoods alive, from barbershops to our pre-K centers. Jeff Brown gives away numerous community gifts every year, from computer centers across the city to basketball courts for the youth. On Thanksgiving, he provides thousands of turkeys to help feed families across Philadelphia. So vote, vote early. Together we can fight back. Jeff Brown is the mayor we need to change things and make our city safe and healthy again. Paid for by Jeff Brown for Mayor. Which mayoral candidate will make sure that Black Philadelphia is included in high-tech, high-wage job growth? Who will unlock access to venture capital for Black innovators? Which candidate knows how to educate our children and prepare them for careers of the future? Hear from the candidates on these topics at WORD's Mayoral Candidate Forum, Inclusion, Innovation, and Philadelphia's Future. This event takes place Tuesday, May 9th at 6 p.m. during Philly Tech Week. Join us at the University City Science Center at 3675 Mark. Street to register go to wordradio.com forward slash tech week. This event is part of Every Voice, Every Vote, brought to you in partnership with Philly Tech Week, Technically Philly, and the University City Science Center. Need a minute? Take a breath and breathe in positivity. Here are words of joy and empowerment from Word Radio. To Black Women by Gwendolyn Brooks. Sisters, where there is cold silence, no hallelujahs, no hurrahs at all, no handshakes, no neon red or blue, no smiling faces, prevail. Prevail across the editors of the world who are obsessed, self-hunting, and self-crowned in the seduced arena. It has been a hard trudge with fainting, bandaging, and death. There have been startling confrontations. There have been tramplings, tramplings of monarchs and of other men. But there remain large countries in your eyes, shrewd sun, a civil balance, the listening secrets, and you create and train your flowers still. I'm Delilah Wilson-Scott. This joy and empowerment vignette was brought to you by Comcast. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. So April is DE&I month, celebrating diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially in business. Tune in to WURD, Word Radio, on air, online, and on our socials this Thursday, April 27th, from 2 p.m to 4 p.m. for an in-depth conversation about diversity experiences, struggles, victories, and recommendations. Guest host Rachel Ferguson will lead the two-part conversation. First, we'll look at DE and I from an individual perspective, and then we'll examine the topic through the corporate lens. Thank you to our sponsors, Comcast and Pico. Again, welcome back, family. 
You are tuned in to Love mm-hmm. Life, and we're talking with none other than Lamar, the legendary Black Ice Manson. Um, before the break, Lamar was filling us in on all kinds of things, and I had no idea that you were exercising your creativity at such a young age, but we do. I mean, we creatives do that. You know, it just flows. It's, it just flows. And um, mm-hmm. you were talking about kindergarten, painting murals and what have you, and it leads me to ask, well, first of all, how about this? I'm not even going to ask you what schools. I want to ask you to tell us about you. Tell us from where you come, yeah. where you grew up. Tell us what schools you went to, because I don't think. Oh I yeah. Um, I'm um, you know I'm from Philly, right? Uh, I was born in Okinawa, uh, Japan. My father was in the Air Force. Um. <laughs> wow, I think about it now. Um. My father was one of two uh, of the survive of his survive of his senior class. They were the only two uh, brothers that didn't uh, die in Vietnam. Uh, and I grad I graduated from Edison. My father graduated from Edison, uh, a high school, and so he was his class suffered the largest amount of casualties than any other senior class in the country so so it's uh you know i'm thinking about it now like wow that's uh it's like that neil degrassi was saying that like the odds of us being born right Mm -hmm. uh and so you know just thinking about like wow it was him and another cat uh who who actually is my son's uncle on his mom's side. Yeah. What a legacy. Yeah, so, wow. you know, it's like, you know, when you think about being here, right? Being, you know, being here is mm-hmm. that thing. But anyway, I was born in Okinawa, came back here. My people are from Philly, uh, down, but also down south, but uh, my core family is from Philly. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, around, I think we came back around I want to say four, I was four or five years old because I know I went to get set in kindergarten. So okay. it's probably around four years old. You went to get set in kindergarten where now? I went to get set at uh, Worcester. Is it Worcester or Fiddler? Okay. Worcester, at Worcester in Germantown. Okay. okay. In the hollow. Okay. And then okay. I went to John B. Kelly. John mm-hmm. B. Kelly uh, on Pulaski Ave was my uh, elementary school from kindergarten through five. Then I went to Amy two. It was Amy six and Amy two. I went to Amy two. Uh, and, um, and then I went, then I went to engineering science for a year uh, and then realized that I didn't, I had no business being at engineering science because I wasn't interested in engineering nor science. I'm, I was an artist. Uh, and, uh, and I found that out because, you know, right before, uh, you know, if you didn't, if you failed a class in your freshman year of engineering and science, you get kicked out. Oh. And so I was, I was okay. going to fail too. So, okay. so before I could get kicked out though, you I went to my dad and I went to my dad and uh, kind of seduced him into, you know, agreeing to let me uh, <laughs> transfer to, to, to another school. You know what I love because um, mm-hmm. well, a lot of, uh, what you're saying i love that your, your legacy your, about your father and your son's legacy his grandfather and his his is it his uncle on his mother's side is it, his uncle on his uh, mom's side yes yeah. his mother yeah. his uncle on his mother's side and his grandfather on your side i love 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 that you know so yeah. much richness and your legacy which is wonderful which is an amazing thing but i also love what it what it what it sounds like to me is that your creativity was encouraged it was encouraged when you were when you were little because you know not every parent is like yeah okay all right well we can do this if a child says well i don't want to do this i don't want to do that so i love that mm-hmm. i want to take a moment to do two things right now one is to mm-hmm. recognize lily a good friend uh, to the show who is joining us on our socials. She says, good evening, Brother Lamar. Um, Good Good evening evening. to you, Lily. Um, And to also take a phone call. One of our family members is on the phone. Are you still there? Is our family member still there on the phone? Hello. Ron, how are you? 
Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm glad that you have your guests on. I want to share things with them. You know, when you, or I, when I woke up and you were talking about love and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then when you start talking about Shakespeare, it brought back to my memory. Shakespeare said, thus conscience makes cowards of us all. And I'm mm-hmm. going on 80 years of age, and, and I did a lot of mm-hmm. courting in my life. And I never forget a couple of times when I go out to take someone out to dinner, I told the troubadour to take off tonight. I got this. Mm-hmm. And one time I took mm-hmm. a lady out to dinner, and I got her brother, and that's about singing. Ooh, chocolate girl. Ooh, it's me. <laughs> and I start doing poetry, which I'm going to do a, a poet to you and Cal dedicated to our audience for me, to y'all in the audience when I get uh, finished making my comments. It is so important. It is so important in your relationships. And it doesn't mean that, you know, like going together or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's very important to have a high spirit. It's just ironic that my birthday is on the 27th, and here I am speaking with someone out of all the things that is going on, that you would come on and talk about, uh, you know, talk about this love. And you know something, sir? When you, when you, sir, you and Carol and all our listening orders, I want to thank you for tuning in on this program and all the programs, but in particular, Cal show can talk about many things that she can do, but on her show, she's always talking about relationships, helping the young people, doing all those things like that, health care and all those things. Sir. It means so much to me. Ramadan was the other day, and a lot of Muslim women and people were out of place, and I got up and they allowed me to make comments and talk about that family reunion, relationships, and things of that nature. And Edison School, you're absolutely right. They had the large amount of numbers of people that have lost their lives coming out of Edison. You mentioned Amy, too. Dr. Ruth Hare left me something. When I stood up for the Amy, too, school before it became Amy, too, it was the old Elvison School. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm saying all these things, excuse me, sir, because I have so much and I'm so happy in my life because of persons like y'all. Calvin on and all the uh, people on the show here. And because of it, I would like to give you this call, this poem, this lovely bouquet I'm holding, whose beautiful color blends will bring happiness to a shedding one of things. And though I give flowers to you, you see, they are from Jesus too, you see. Even as you do unto others, you say, you also do unto me. And this thing called love, what is this thing we call love? Love must come with, it must come with the word love. But most of all, it must come with caring. That is what, and I can bear witness to what I am saying. And people have been hearing me talk through the years. It is so important. And I said, you got children, you got grandkids. Hug them when they are young because it's not because what they don't get at an early age. They will feel it as they get older, like myself. So that's what I always say without giving a testimony. I am love. I am energy, sir. And continue to do what you're doing, both of y'all, you, Carol, and everybody in the audience. Because when you give caring and love, it's like 360. It comes right back around to you. So when the people boo you and people, and I, I, when people boo you and they do that, sir, they're not looking down at you. They're looking up at you, sir. Anytime you are an entertainer, and you can go somewhere to try to up the people's spirit with poetry and the things you're talking about, that is what, that's the church right there. It's all about peace. And if you love yourself and you want to do that, say love thyself, you're commanded to do that. Then love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm not talking some other crap, some other stuff there. And you're like, when you get my age, sir, when you get my age, hopefully the Almighty God will bless you with the energy I have. And I always tell Carolyn, I always cry. I have not financed none of that stuff. When I hear kind people like you and many of us that be on this program, this is what uplifts my spirit. This uplifts mm-hmm. my spirit. Because I bear witness, love has everything to do with it. Has anybody ever seen my life story? If anybody ever seen my life story, they would like to remind 
you could have been a very bitter, a bitter person, but I didn't. And when Cal was in that school over there, he took them children and she speak to them. The one little boy, if she was having a problem with him learning the instrument, sir, mm-hmm. it's because Cal spoke to him. And the guy, the little kid, Ray Cal said, the guy saw the little kid hit on the drum. When she did that, she got his company. It was no disobedience from that child no more. And that's the same thing in life. Remember this now as I told it's not because of who someone else is, uh, you know, Cal. It's because of who you are. And when you know who you are, then you're operating from the empowerment zone. We need caring in this world today. I'm not talking to or something like that, sir. Continue. Mm. Ron, it seems that we've lost Ron. Family, um, mm. We've lost our connection to Ron. I mean, let me word that properly. But Ron mm. is our friend of the show. We love Ron. And we are always grateful for uh, his words of encouragement and the positivity that he shares. Really, uh, he really is. He really is. He, he always calls with a positive message. And he, he spreads the love that he has. And, and it really is amazing. I, I believe we have a, another friend on the line. I'm not sure. Um, is our other friend still on the line? Hello, are you there on the phone, on the line? We may have lost, we may have lost our connection. So what I yeah. want to do right now, because I'm, I'm, I had to take a moment to digest, because like I said, Ron always, always calls us with a positive message and with some love. Mm-hmm. I want to go back no, to I was, our I, I, I got a, I was, a, I was working not to get a, uh get emotional was one my my father's name was Ron uh-huh. um and 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 what he was saying was definitely you know it was just you know affirmation reconfirmation these are things that I everything he says I talk about all the time I'm not a I'm not a religious cat really you know uh I'm more I'm very very spiritual you know I, I'm I'm all religions if anything you know because I do love God in that way. And I do believe that it's our responsibility to to love and to care and be genuine. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was I was very um, at a very rare wealth for a cat to come up as his prophet. Thank you. Ron, I'm sorry. Ron, are you there? Mm. We were having, I'm sorry, excuse me, family. If you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's WURD radio.com. We were talking with our friend Ron, and mm. I believed there to be, a, 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 there was something going on with our connection. So I'm not sure, Ron, we did not hear the last of what you said. And I want to make sure that you know that. Um, that we did not hear the very last of what you said, but the message that you did share, we did hear appreciate and we did you, feel and we appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was checking a moment ago as well because I believed there to be another friend of ours on the line and I'm not sure if our friend is mm. still there. Are you still there on the line? Yes, I am. What's that guy right there? Hey, is this friend? Um, yes, it is. Hi, friendly Fred. How Thank are you, you. today? Um, that's, that's my uh, nickname to my, my birth name. My mother had named me was Frederick. Cause if you listen to your name, it says Frederick. So that's one name. And Canty is what my mother named me. That was her maiden name down to generations and stuff like this there. Hmm. So she named me Fred Canty. So I just want to say, um, hi, we family and friends. One of the greatest things you ever want to learn about is family because God designed the family. Mm-hmm. And our families teach us how to love. I mean, excuse me. Our families teach us how to live the right way. They teach us how to solve our problems mm-hmm. with honesty and love. They show us mm-hmm. how to see the best in any situation that is supremely that is, that arises 
today typify what it means to love somebody with all their hearts. And I've been up all night to and in a sleep. Mm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yep, I got insomnia. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, okay. but I sleep sometimes, though. Mm. Well, I'm going to pray for you that you get more rest because, you know, we need that. Especially okay, I got one more thing to say. Okay. Right now, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful morning, and oh. it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and lots of prayer. And holiday, Madonna. Oh, Thank you. Goodness. Thank you, Fred. It's always, always a pleasure to hear from our family members. We love hearing from you, whether it's via a phone call or the messages that you leave for us on social media. Um, Mark Pena says, love and life, great combination. Thank you, Mark. And, and happy to have you join us. We've been talking with none other than Lamar, the legendary Black Ice Manson. And Lamar... <laughs> Just, you know what? I cannot get out of my brain. You saying about your father and about your son's uncle. Mm -hmm. And it brings me to, <clears throat> excuse me. It brings me to, you know, thinking about family and, and traditional family for you to have so much mm -hmm. legacy and for your son to have so much legacy, you know, from you, his grandfather mm -hmm. on uh, uh, through, you know, because of you and his uncle on his mother's side. I mean, that's a whole, that's, that's a beautiful gift for a child, yeah. all of that history, yeah. all of that legacy, and uh, to have some, um, to have strong black men in his life. That's an amazing thing. And it makes me, it, but it brings me to today, 2023. Um, I'm constantly yeah. thinking about, you know, what we know of a traditional black family and what we, the kind of the images that we tend to see nowadays. Yeah. Do you think yeah. we will ever get back to um, what would be considered a traditional black yeah. family or could, do you think we'll ever get back to that um i i think we i don't i don't say you know if it's it's getting back to that i don't think i mean i, I hope hopefully there's that critical mass that happens again right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh to where neighborhoods go back to being neighborhoods you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. community goes back to being community you know i'm a, i'm a i grew up in you know germantown first and I was a boys club kid you know so I grew up I was grown by the community mm -hmm. you know I had I had you know Chuck and Mr and uh you know Chuck Mr Mr Smart Mr Smitty Mr Roy Ross you know Mr Lowe these are all my counselors you know uh mm -hmm. um along with my dad my uncles my grandfather, my my other, you know, uncles, you know, uncles on my mom's side. You know, I had mm -hmm. I had a very rare wealth, you know, because I just had so many dope men, you know, around me. And when I say dope men, like everybody made their mistakes. We're human. Everybody was human, you know. But sure. I had I had the realest men around me, you know. Um, it's one of the, I think one of the. One of the best things my father did uh, for me was to let me see all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't, he didn't hide his flaws. I love that. You know, um, I love that. when it when he whenever he learned a lesson, he uh, he. He gave he me the lesson. Yeah. Right. I think, you know, and I think so that's so important. Really... I'm so yeah. sorry to interject it, but as yeah, a parent, so... I think it's so important mm -hmm. to, to humanize, to, 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 to let your child know this is life. Family, I want to take a second um, because we have to take mm -hmm. a short break. Stay with us, though, because uh, we'll be right back. Word Radio Digital Tip of the Month with Stephanie Humphrey. Brought to you by Comcast. 
As the weather gets warmer and pandemic numbers stay low, we can expect travel to be on everyone's must-do list this year. So if you are heading out of town, think about saving these things on your smartphone for safekeeping. Take pictures of your passport, driver's license, or other identification. Make sure you have digital copies of your itinerary, tickets, and reservation numbers. A photo of your credit cards and bank cards could also come in handy if your wallet is lost or stolen. Membership numbers for things like AAA and photos of your medications are also a good thing to have on hand. You can take photos of all this information and easily store it in a locked note on your smartphone or in an online folder on a service like Dropbox. But whatever you do, make sure you have all your important info stored somewhere safe before you hit the road. Stay tuned to WURD for more tips and stay connected with us at wordradio.com. Pollution from trucks is a public health crisis. Diesel burning trucks belch dangerous levels of pollution and communities living near ports and along freight corridors breathe especially high levels of this dirty air. But this crisis has a solution. My name is Sasan Sadat and I work for Earth Justice. I'm working to clean up our air quality, particularly for communities that bear the burden of diesel pollution. For the sake of our lungs, our health, and our climate, the future of trucking in this country has got to be zero emissions. Until then, I will never rest. Earth Justice is a national legal nonprofit defending the environment and people's health. Earth Justice is fighting to save lives, protect our climate, and strengthen our economy through the shift to zero emissions. If clean air matters to you, visit us at earthjustice.org. Earth Justice, because the earth needs a good lawyer. Here's what you missed on Wake Up With Word. Joining us now is attorney Damon Tyner. He's a former Atlantic County prosecutor. We're talking about the case of an 85-year-old white man who shot a black teen when that teen came to the man's front door in Kansas City, Missouri last week. The teen was looking for his twin brothers. The young man was 16 years old. His name is Ralph Yarl, and he is now recovering at home. So he got charged with assault. He didn't get charged with, with attempted murder. I don't know what went into the decision making in this case to not charge attempted murder. I would suspect that maybe the, the district attorney out there didn't feel that he had the intent. You know, from the little bits of pieces that have come out, they've said that, you know, he thought someone was trying to break into his home. He was afraid. But then you start hearing other stories and other things that uh, as you unpeel that onion, he actually had eyes on him and saw who it was mm-hmm. and directly and, and intentionally fired a shot, two shots at this young man. Not only did he hit him in his head, he stood over him apparently and fired a shot into his abdomen. Tune in to Wake Up With Word with Solomon Jones every Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Only on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know I'm going to say it as I like to do so. That's wurdradio.com. Um, we've been talking about love, about life, about all of that good stuff with our mm-hmm. guest tonight, who is Lamar Manson, also known as the legendary Black Ice, who is an award winning poet, amongst other things. And uh, we thought we would continue the celebration of National Poetry Month by inviting him to be our guest tonight and talk with us about his illustrious career and his journey thus far. Before the break, though, he was talking mm. about the strong black men in his life, uh, the influences that he's had. It, it, I was actually going to ask you um, who and what were your initial influences and if that had changed in yeah. any way. Um, so I guess I will yeah. ask that question. I know some of them were the, the strong black men that you had in your life, but were there others? And has that changed? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, you know, I had my, you know, my dad, my uncles, my grandfather, uh, you know, 
I had I had I've had some very beautiful I have very beautiful black relative black you know black men relatives but then mm -hmm. also I said I was you know I'm a boys club kid so you know I had Mr. Cook and Chuck and Mr. Roy and you know Mr. Roy and Smitty you know that's how we learned how to swim and I learned how to play pool you know shoot pool and play checkers and chess and um you know, kickball and all of these things, but also learn pecking order and, uh, and you know, and just what it is to, you know, the action of respect, you know, mm -hmm. respecting yourself, respecting, uh, you know, respecting others, you know, like this is where we learned the boys clubs, where we learned that bullying, that like stuff like bullying was, you know, was unacceptable. You know, mm -hmm. you learn the, these, we had, I had men around me who taught not just me, but other cats who grew up in Germantown, who actually grew up to be dope cats, you know, Clifford Smith and Kyle Smith and uh, uh, Albert and uh, um, uh, like all of these cats wound up working at the Youth Study Center and things, you know, like, so, uh, so yeah, I just had, and then, you know, Mr. Daniel was my, my high school history teacher uh and you know super incredible uh uh cat who really inspired me to to study heavier and you know I just had a lot of you know and then just you know other cats I came across I've just always been I guess it's, it's the frequency I, I guess I vibrate on that frequency where I, I meet I've always been guided by all of these you know these beautiful men and women but mm -hmm, I definitely mm -hmm. had you know, I'm a barber by trade. I worked in the barber shop with 16 of us. You know, and you know, Mar you know, Mark Lightfoot and Paris and Ricky, you know, and, and, and Richard Taylor and Johnny and Joe, like these cats, we all poured into each other. So right. um uh, and, and tried to be that example as well. So, you know. You made a, a comment about the village that you had growing up, and it, it, it made me think about my, my own village, quite honestly, and you were naming people mm -hmm. from the neighborhood and things, and and uh, I had a conversation about that most recently about um, how my neighborhood raised me, how, how you know, contributed, I shouldn't say mm -hmm. wholly, but contributed to my upbringing, you know, it was always mm -hmm. Little Riddick, you all right? Little Riddick, you ain't by yourself, are you? Little Riddick, you need me to walk you, you know? Um, and it was, it's such a different, it feels like it's such a different world now, such a different world. Mm, um, absolutely. When, when do you think that a uh, pivot began? Uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, the eighties, mm. you know, the eighties when they, you know, when they shoved, you know, between, you know, the, between the, uh, you know, the Rockefeller drug laws, and the perpetuation of crime, you know what I'm saying, to to uh to inject into the the prison system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it was, you know, it it wasn't a it wasn't happenstance that you know that everything oh. changed. They defunded, you okay. know, they 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 defunded the boys' clubs, they 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 uh pulled budgets immediately from you know, we watched this happen in the 90s when they pulled all of the arts and, you know, all of the arts and music uh, budget mm -hmm. from out of, the out of the schools. But they, you know, was given hundreds of millions to uh, the private prison business, you know, uh -huh. so, uh -huh. uh, you know, and it's and, and so between the drugs and then also, you know, art, you know, art is so, you know, art is so much more addictive you know, than, than narcotics, you know, it is the, it's mm -hmm. the, it's the ultimate narcotic, you know, rhythm and sound and, mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, you know, they took, you know, I, I come from them 51. I watched, I watched cats go and start wearing big gold chains. Then I watched Chuck and them come along and I watched them same cats that took off the, that had them big gold chains put on black medallions. And then I watched those cats get kind of muted and replaced with NWA, mm -hmm. you know, 
Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a perpetuation that happens. It's a very, it's, it's a very apparent perpetuation, you know, and it's in the music, you know, if we want to, you know, anything, anything that is repetitious becomes habitual. Mm -hmm. So if you hear mm -hmm. the same drill music, you know, poor music 30 times a day, to think that it is not affecting your spirit mm -hmm. um, is, is insanity to me. You know? Absolutely. And so, um, you know, and that was the turn in the nineties, you know, late, it's, it's been, a, I mean, or you say that wasn't the turn. It was like, that was when it, they kicked in. Because yeah, I was about to say, because it, know, it was already in Because what's happening now, yeah, it's yeah. just a, uh, yeah. You know, and I, I said this at my show that day. I said, you know, I moved to another country. I live in, you know, living in Amsterdam. When I mm -hmm. moved to Amsterdam, I was, I was reminded of how beautiful the community that I grew up in was. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when I come back here to the community that I grew up in, mm -hmm. it's, it's just completely foreign. Yeah, yeah. Right. I can. You know what? I, I want to take a pause for there. I'm so sorry to mm -hmm. uh, inter interject, but we're going to have to take a short break. But I want to come back to this conversation. I want to uh, hear you continue to tell us about that because I was going to ask you about the differences. I love Amsterdam, but I I want to hear about the differences. Yeah. Um, family, stay with us though because we'll be right back. Jeff Brown, as you know by now, is a grocer who used his Shoprite supermarkets to address food deserts. His stores now feed about a quarter of all Philadelphians. Jeff's solution became a national model for combating a food crisis and poverty. For it, Jeff was honored at the State of the Union Address. He's employed 2,300 union workers who get childcare, retirement, and healthcare benefits. He's the only candidate who has worked with a large union workforce. City workers who pick up the trash, SEPTA workers, food workers, Teamsters, and more have all endorsed Jeff Brown for mayor for his management skills. Now the politicians, the same ones who denied services to our communities, are attacking Jeff. They don't want things to change. It suits their purposes. Together we can fight back. So vote. Vote early. Every voice counts. Jeff Brown is the mayor we need to change things and make our city safe and healthy again. Paid for by Jeff Brown for mayor. Bank of America is stepping up when it matters most. Last year, to expand our efforts to advance racial equality and economic opportunity, we committed $1.25 billion over five years. To date, we've put nearly $400 million to work. Together with our local partners, we're increasing affordable housing options, expanding small business support, and much more. At Bank of America, we call this a nice start. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America and a member FDIC, equal housing lender. Stay connected on the go with the new and improved Word Radio app. Search Word Radio in your app store. Stream every show with increased clarity. Easily access Word TV, Eco Word, and Livelihood. Start or redo your four word membership and buy Word swag. Remember, Black Media Matters. Get the new and improved Word Radio app today. Available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. We know the world is crazy. There's a never-ending stream of negativity constantly flowing by our ears. We need daily reminders that joy is essential. Word Radio offsets the awful with daily words of joy and empowerment. These are on-air messages meant to uplift our spirit. We invite you, the word listener, to share your words of joy and empowerment with us. You can read a brief poem, share a favorite inspirational quote, an empowering story, or a passage from a book. Just call 215-425-7875, extension 107, and leave your words of joy and empowerment on the voicemail. Please make sure your message is one minute or less. It will be helpful to use a timer to stay on track. We look forward to broadcasting your words of joy and empowerment. We are WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Yeah! 
Celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media, we're bringing joy and power to the people. This is WURD, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, Philadelphia. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. This is your celebration. When I think of WURD, I think about the great pioneers of the Black press, like Ida B. Wells Barnett, who led the charge against lynching. I think of Sam Lacey and Wendell Smith, who used their typewriters to fight for the integration of baseball. And I think of about all those Black media outlets that led the charge for civil rights. I'm Chris Murray, host of the Chris Murray Report. And I want to wish WURD a happy 20th anniversary and to say thank you for being a strong voice in our community. We're celebrating 20 years of progressive Black Talk Media. What is love? You're listening to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. I think I know. back welcome back family welcome to the top of the second hour of love and life on WURD progressive black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com family april is d e and i month celebrating diversity equity and inclusion especially in business tune in to Word Radio on air, online, and on our socials this Thursday, April 27th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. for an in-depth conversation about diversity experiences, struggles, victories, and recommendations. Guest host Rachel Ferguson will lead the two-part conversation. First, we'll look at DE&I from an individual perspective, and then we'll examine the topic through the corporate lens. Thank you to our sponsors, Comcast and Pico. So family, if you've just joined us, you know that you're tuned in. Well, you now know that you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We're talking with none other than Lamar Manson, also known as the legendary Black Ice. Some of our family members, members on our socials are joining us and checking in. Cheryl, oh, hi there, right. Cheryl Brown. She says, good evening, Lamar. Good <laughs> Cheryl evening. Brown. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Um, so before the break, you, you actually broached the subject that I was going to ask about because I know that you live abroad. Now you live in Amsterdam, which I love. Listen, I'm coming. Mm. I'm coming to Amsterdam. But in any event, um, you were talking about the differences because we we were talking about, you know, family, just to bring you up to speed, we were talking about how life has changed, how the neighborhoods have Mm. changed and how when we were younger, we had a village. We had, you know, more or uh, more of an extension of our tribe that looked out for Mm. us, that watched us, that helped us, you know, along our journeys. Um, Mm. And now today it's a different day and time it's just different yeah. so what what um how different what are the differences that you see now when you come back to your uh, mm. old stomping grounds or where you grew up i mean it's night and day I, i've been i say i've been resensitized mm. right um mm. because it's you know you don't know what it's like to not live in a police state until you don't live in a police state. That's a strong so statement for a come, black man to make. So when I come back here, you know, just for, when I go to Amsterdam, when I go, I, have, I, I go, when I'm going through customs, through, when I'm going through customs, they say, oh, you know, the hi, how are you coming back? You with us a lot. Oh, you know, but now I live there. It's, oh, you know, how's your Dutch? You know, they go, who got that good? All is good. And they get right into it with me. Mm-hmm. But it's pleasant, right? They welcome, before I move there, every time I go, I'm welcomed back. I, 
Well, you beat right? me to it. I keep I saying come, I'm going. I come here. I'm, I have an American passport. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not an ignorant dude, so I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, being an eyesore coming through, <laughs> you know, people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm respectful, but it's like, they look at my passport and you were born in Japan, sir. It's like I was born in Japan. You know, father was in the Air Force. Your father was in the Air Force, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and why were you in? And it's like, wow, I'm 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 a citizen. I was I was raised here. I'm American, yet I get harassed here in this other place that I have to learn the language. They welcome me, you know. So between that. That's just one difference. Even we can go, I can go all day with it. Healthcare, education, mm -hmm. you know, here is, you know, I, I, it's so many things that you realize like, oh, wow. I didn't even know this was possible that, that education didn't have to be tier. Mm -hmm. That education didn't have to, you know, like, oh, I didn't know that there's a place where you could, like, if it, it doesn't matter how much money you have. That doesn't get you a better education, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? The, the poor child gets the same education as the royal child gets. Healthcare, you know, uh, healthcare is is even across the board. There is mm -hmm. no tier healthcare. It ain't the more money you got, the better care you get. When I, I was sick, yeah. I had meningococcal pneumonia a few years back. I was in the hospital about almost a month. Uh, the same doctors that work on the royal family worked on me. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let me leave the hospital until they felt like I was well enough. I never saw a bill. Mm -hmm. My, mm -hmm. my health care premium didn't go up. You know, I pay 120 mm -hmm. euro a month and that covers everything. Optical, dental, and anything, there is no, oh, I, if I go, I go see my GP, my GP sends me to a specialist. If the specialist says I need whatever, that's what mm -hmm. I get. There is mm -hmm. no, now I got to call that. I send this to the insurance company and see if the insurance company is willing to pay yeah. for it. It's a big you know, You know, here you have, we got health benefits here. Mm -hmm. In the Netherlands, we have health rights. Mm. It's a difference. What brought you, know, you to the um, Netherlands? What what brought you there? Uh, teaching. Okay. Teaching, a little bit of love. Love happened, right? But I was, te I, you know, I was, I've been going back and forth. Um, I've been going over since like maybe 2010 was my first time going over there. Mm -hmm. And it's, of all the places I had been at that point, it was the first place I went and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to move here. Mm -hmm. because, that, I said the same thing. I said the same thing. Because it's the it's the place where I feel the most Lamar. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel I don't have to I don't have to I don't have to wear a mask at all. And um, you know, and people just and I like peace. Mm -hmm. You know, I like I like peace, and it's peaceful. You know what I'm saying it's it's uh the mindset of people is just different. Of course, capitalism exists, so there's that. Mm -hmm, but indeed. the mindset of people, my you know, my Lamar Jr. He moved over there with me two years ago, and we was walking home one night late. And he, at that, he's twenty five now, but he's and and some cats was coming our way, and I knew what was going to happen because you know. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the urban in this. It's the Philly in this that automatically we on swivel. So he was like, mm -hmm. oh, hold up, hold up. Let me straighten up. Pop. And I'm like, calm down. They ain't worried about you. Well, you don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I do know. This mm -hmm. ain't that. Right. You don't have to, you know, like for as much as we deem it necessary, uh, rationally so, to carry firearms. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a gun carrier. You know, uh, just I just don't like guns. Mm 
you know, like I'm, I have a family full of gun carriers, but I just don't, mm -hmm. it's not my, my, I got a light. My energy is, I'm not afraid to go nowhere, mm -hmm. you know, but, but anyway, like to come from a place that is so like, I grew up around guns to go to a place where I'm talking to cats that's the same age as me. And they're like, like they know, of course they know what guns are, but it's not, it wasn't part of their upbringing. Right. There's no PTSD. You know, I'm not worried about my son, Elijah, my baby son. I'm not worried about him uh, uh, out in the street. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about, uh, I'm not worried about those, those, you know, when you have, when you got all this room and all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh, wow. I get to figure me out now. Right. I get to relax. There's a different relaxation. I mean, I, you know what? Um, one thing you just said when you were talking about your your older son, you and he walking mm -hmm. down the street, and he said, "Hold up, hold up, hold up." You know, I gotta let me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. walking around with that type of anxiety. But mm -hmm. that's what we live with here. Mm -hmm. It's a different life. It's a different lifestyle. That anxiety that you carry with you day in, day out, from the moment you awake until you go to sleep. And you were explaining to him, oh, you can breathe. Exactly. Exactly. That's his country. Like, it's illegal in the Netherlands for pharmaceutical mm -hmm. companies to advertise on TV and the radio. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. I Imagine that. Ima I'm telling you, I imagine that. You know, the, it's, that makes that. that makes life a totally different thing. That makes that makes, you know, living something totally different than what we experience here in the United States. I want to just take a moment to recognize our family members who are on our socials, who are joining the conversation. Um, Mark, Mark Pena says, we need some change. He writes, bring back some of the old black community programs and ways. And then he quotes you by saying, this ain't that. Um, Cheryl Brown writes that she's loving this conversation, Lamar. Thank you for sharing it. So I wanted to mm. share that with you. you. So that you know that our family members are mm. uh, joining the discussion and are here with us. But, you know, I um, it bothers me that our babies, our babies mm. grow up with that. Like you said, it's perpetuated. So when you when you when you are a good and grown adult, Imagine all of that, all of those years compounded with that anxiety, with that stress, because mm -hmm. that's what it is. Just mm -hmm. trying to live from day to day, just trying to live from day to day. If you can't walk down the street and not feel comfortable. I mean, in between being, in between your life being at, like literally at risk, mm -hmm. then you also have the autonomous machine on your back, right? Indeed. Indeed. And, you know, most of, you know, we are very, we are very privileged, we are. right, as creatives, as successful, you know, uh, operative creatives. We, we know the life that we have is a, mm -hmm. is, is a blessed one, um, which everybody's life is, but, you know, and so, but to, to have that monkey on your back, mm -hmm. that's forcing you to, you know, you live to work. Right, you live to work over in in, in the Netherlands. They work to mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. there's, va like, oh, there's vacation vacation money mm -hmm. is put in your check. You get vacation money twice a year. I'm it's a kidding. normal thing. Everybody goes on holiday. Everybody, everybody. You know, and so it is, it, it is a way a of life. I'm to so sorry to, place where you, to be in a place where you are, where you get to, where you get to expound on your why, mm -hmm. right? Over here, we get, we have to like, it's, we, we're forced to concentrate on the what. Always. You know, Always. I've got an idea. What can I get for it? Mm-hmm. You know, and so uh, I think a lot, you know, this country as far as, and we're, you know, we're obviously we're uh, incredible people because even amidst all that, all of this oppression, mm 
and 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 terror we still come up with the most amazing art the most amazing uh uh you know uh, you know the most amazing teachers and these things come out of you know what we have to experience here mm -hmm. but if we didn't have to experience we don't have to experience it if 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 they didn't want us to I believe one of the reasons for that is that our, our, our ability to escape being creatives, uh, our ability, mm. uh, we live for escapism um, through our creativity mm. and it helps us because we're, we're sensitive beings because we're creatives. So it helps us. It really does help us. But you're absolutely like, uh, right. I, I'm happy for you that you get to be in a place where you can be yourself wholeheartedly, where you don't have to think twice about who Lamar is and uh, where Lamar mm -hmm. is going and what he's going to do and, and or any of that. You don't have to concentrate, you don't have to concentrate on any of that because I mean, you, as you know, family, you know, here in the United States, be it man, woman, or child, you have to plan your day. You have to think about the mm -hmm. hours. You have to think about where you're going. Okay. Now let me go mm -hmm. here first because I don't want to be on that side or over here or what have, what have you. It's just a different mm -hmm. way of life. It's a different thing. I hate to say that that's where we are. Um, I really, really, really hate that that is what we've become. But um, but that's our reality. That is that's it. That is where we are. But I'm curious to know because I'm, I'm constantly having this conversation, and I'm curious to know um, when we'll shift back or when we'll we'll get to I'll, I'll say another place where we could have a level of comfort. You know, I feel like. Funny though, it's funny though, Carol, because I'm resensitized. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I've been re like I understand a I, I understand a lot more a lot more more fully the trauma. Mm -hmm. But I ain't afraid when I come here. Mm -hmm. I ain't paranoid when I come here. I still run up, I still go around the corner and run up in the bodega. And all them cats is out there. Mm -hmm. It's eight or nine of them. With their little tight jeans on, you know, they and they locks and they, you know, and I'm sure they it's a couple poles out there. But I I've just never, you know, I am who I, I am, I am who I am. I'm supposed to be where I'm at. So and I and so for me to be somewhere where it's like wow I don't have to I don't have to worry about that when I'm here though I don't necessarily worry about that and I don't know whether it's and not to say that I'm not naive I know what's going on no. and I know it happens but I've always been the guy where my energy is such that when I pass these cats when I pull up and I go into the store because if I gotta go to the store I'm gonna go into the store the same exactly. cats that are all smile your old head. Well, when they come by me, they say, what's up, OJ? And for some reason, my energy gets something different from the from from these young cats. I was just about to say, you said it yourself. You said it's your light. It's your vibration. You said that yourself. You said my light is such that it is you. It is you. But, you know, that's the blessing in being who you are. Um, everybody but that but, but understand that that beautiful thing comes from. My mom, my family, mm -hmm. my community. Your village. Yes, yes. I yes. understand. Like the Mar that grew in the Mar, grew in the Mar from Happy Hollow to Nice Town to North Philly. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't. I ain't go to no private schools. I was. I was up and around and all through. You know, through through the neighborhoods and the community grew me. So we have. It's not like we can't do that. I know brilliant men that are out there doing the work. It's just not enough of us. That now that you right know? there. I was about to say because you and were the, pouring into and the, the but number also, but also there's ahead, a, the sorry. war of we didn't art cook, Mr. Chuck, Mr. Smart, my pop. They didn't have to battle uh art. Hmm. Right, that's a hard battle. When you say you that, know, what do you, when you say they didn't have to battle art, when they you say that, battle art, 
right? Like my art, the art that I that I was taking in, that was being created mm -hmm. as I was growing, was okay. nurturing, mm -hmm. right? Rock him, LL, all these like these. The art was different. Yeah. The TV was yeah. different. Cosby yeah. Show, The Jeffersons, different world. The art yeah. that parents have to battle, that people have to discern, is different. Mm -hmm. So it hits yeah. different. I was I going to ask I you about. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask no, no, no. you um, about that. I'm I'm glad that that you you steered the conversation in that direction because um, in talking, you know, in talking about our upbringing and talking about our villages and those who poured into us to make us who we are today, you know, I, I recognize um, the images that we see of ourselves, particularly and especially of young women of, co of color have changed tremendously over the decades, you know, and um, now everything, well, the majority of what we see now includes strong sexual innuendos. So we, we've got, uh, like you were saying, the parents battle art. I'm, I work with our babies. I hear what they're talking about. I hear what they're saying. And yes, everything is about sex. Everything is about, it, it, it is, mm -hmm. Where we are now is that, you know what, I'm leading this conversation and I'm noticing that we have to take a break. Family, um, when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation and we want to hear from you, okay? We want you to join the discussion as well, but stay with us for this moment because we will be right back. SEPTA is hiring. As an employee, you will earn competitive compensation and great benefits, including medical, dental, prescription, and a pension. Visit jobs.septa.org to apply today. Word Radio is the only African-American owned and operated talk radio station in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and one of only three remaining in the country. In the past 20 years, Word has evolved into a multimedia, multi-platform communications company that reaches deeply into the Black community through radio, events, digital, and social media. It is considered the go-to channel to engage, interact, and connect with Philadelphia's Black community. Our brand is built on the personal legacy of our founder, Walter P. Lomax Jr., M.D., Dr. Lomax was a brilliant physician who established medical centers in underserved neighborhoods throughout Philadelphia to provide high quality health care to black and brown communities for over 30 years. One of his most ambitious acquisitions was when he purchased WURD Radio. He understood the power of ownership and the power of independent media. Through Word, he wanted to ensure that Philadelphia's Black community had the ability to speak and be heard in their own voice. We are celebrating 20 years of Black excellence. We are celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media. Life had a remote control. You could pause or rewind. <laughs> well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but prediabetes does. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. The Word Radio Newsletter. Keeping you informed, engaged, and connected. Sign up by visiting wordradio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page and type your email address under Connect With Us. You'll receive the latest information on Word Radio. Messages from our president and CEO, Sarah Lomax-Reese. Exclusive articles and multimedia content and resources. Stay informed with the Word Radio Newsletter. Let me tell you something, and don't you ever forget it. Success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online. Listen, give us a call. You can do so by calling 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll-free at one 866 
361-0900. We're talking about a lot of things. We're talking <laughs> about life. We're talking about, you know, growing up. We're talking about being poured into. We're talking about that village that once existed and how that has changed over the years. Um, before the break, I was talking about the images of our young women that we see now and how the majority of, uh, of those images are so sexualized. The, the, the innuendos and how our babies are affected. And, uh, and I was saying that, you know, I work with our babies. I work with a lot of our babies and I hear the conversation they have and they, and I see that things are taking mm-hmm. place, taking place in our schools. And um, I, I'm, I'm curious to know um, what you see as an educator at, with, with what age group do you work? Um, I mean, I'm always, I've all, I'm always like in the community somewhere. So I'm always mm-hmm. with some high. I'm, I, I'm at like high school, uh, but mostly mm-hmm. college students. You know, as far as like teaching curriculum in schools over in Amsterdam, it was, you know, it was universities. But I always, whenever I'm somewhere, I, I always lead um, um, uh, uh, performance opportunities with trying to connect with uh, some form of community organization when I'm in, you know, whatever respective city. Because you most of the time, poets are community workers anyway. Indeed, indeed. I'm mixing apples mm-hmm. with oranges. But I just mm-hmm. had this thought, when you were talking about your son and you walking down the street, what, what do you think mm-hmm. has been the biggest, or what would you say has been the, the, the best thing, the best, the absolute best thing about him moving over there with you? Mm. Oh man, I wish I had these. I had these pic. I have these pictures. Uh, before he he took a picture right before the night before he moved, mm-hmm. and he was out West Philly with his homies, hoodie on, you know, tied all tight, like not showing himself. Mm-hmm. And then he took a, you know, he he was working at a um, Michelin star restaurant. Uh, as a uh, host and a server and a wine pairer. Nice. And um, and so this this picture uh, a year and a half later is him. I mean, just bright, smiling, like so. Just two com- like it's like the dark side and the light side of this young man. And uh, and that place allows the allows that light to come out, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, because there's just room to breathe, there's room to think, um, you know, and and kids are still getting bombarded with it. Um, again, capitalism and mm-hmm. all of this new, you know, and just new group think and uh, and the bullying, you know, people or you know, people are really bullying, and because I don't know. And so I'm, they're they're attempting. Somebody's attempting to cancel me in the Netherlands, like the poetry mm-hmm. community. Not all of the poetry community, right, but, right, right. Uh, some of the po- because I posted, I reposted something on Instagram. I, I, I'm not, I'm not the internet guy. I'm, I, I see something I post. I didn't know who Prager U was. I don't vet them. I just, you know, mm-hmm. but it was something mm-hmm. about. It was something about. Uh, YouTube kids targeting children, you know, like specifically going, promoting to children, um, you know, just queer uh, culture and lifestyle. And so I said, my caption was just, please let these children be children. So Mm -hmm. of course, I understand how it got taken in that way. But what I meant as a whole uh, was that just like you, I'm tired of seeing the little girls twerking and whatever that little waist dumb thing is they doing, and I'm them being over, you know, just over sexualized. I'm tired of seeing pictures of some little young mother got her daughter dressed just like her, and she got a middle finger up, and she got a middle finger up. Like that's not cute, you know. I'm tired of seeing, uh, you know, little boys without their dads, but somehow the mom and the aunts or whoever are trying to make this little baby boy be a, you know, that's my little man. He's not a little man. He's a little boy, 
you know, let them be a little boy and not let these kids be kids. Now, even with some of my students, I remember at the beginning of all my classes, the very first day, we do a safe circle. And I'm, I make everybody, starting with myself, say something, you know, introduce themselves and then say something that they, that, you know, that they, that we want this, the, the class to know. Mm-hmm. And then we have to say something that's incredibly uncomfortably vulnerable. Mm. right and I always start and we go around and usually by halfway through the class we were it's, we it's, we crying you know because it's and and but I do that so that there's always a safe so that we all have something to protect the other mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. and so I'm sitting there listening to my students and mm-hmm. it turned into you know I'm such and such and I am the, the second thing they say is I'm non-binary and my, it's like, mm-hmm. why is, why does that have to be the second thing you tell me about yourself? And, and the only way I can explain it without, you know, without getting called the transphobe, homophobe, or however that goes, um, is that when I was a kid, I've, all, I'm, I've always been an artist. I am who I am. When I was a kid, I used to watch the village people. Love the village people. Mm-hmm. They come on American Bandstand. It's a cop. It's a Native American. It's a construction worker. It's a cowboy. You know, I'm a visual. I'm an artist. I'm a creative. My right. mind is blown right now. And they singing about the YMCA. I'm a boys club kid. That's my spot. Right. Right. right? My mom knew. My dad knew, all the adults around us knew mm-hmm. that these men were queer and mm-hmm. from the East Village. This is thus their name, the village people. But they know what they didn't do? They didn't bother us mm-hmm. with that. We didn't, it wasn't, that didn't, because it didn't matter. Right, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And so it I grew matter. up, un- you know, I'm, un- I we were up, black, we, 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 we did. We all did. We all right. did the letters. We all did. Uh, um, yeah. Fame, right? Mm-hmm. Fame, Leroy. Yeah. Now, as a grown man, when I go back and watch Fame now, I'm like, wow, Leroy was kind of sweet. But <laughs> as a boy, but- as a growing boy, a creative, right? So I, I didn't play sports. I didn't, you know, that wasn't, none of those things, I was asthmatic when I was a kid. I, and I just, that's not my thing. I'm, a, mm. I'm all artists. So I was, a, I was the funny, cool kid, but I was still a weirdo because I lived in my own world, yeah. right? So well, when I'm watching fame, what made me watch, what made me like be comfortable with me was that black boy with them cornrows. And he was doing ballet and whatnot, but I, for some reason, yeah. that wasn't my thing. So yeah. I wasn't paying no attention to that. And again, right. not my mom, not my teachers, not my dad, not my very, my father, my uncles, my grandfather are the toughest men I've ever known in my life and the most affectionate men I've ever known in my life. But when I say toughest, I'm not speaking like, oh, they're my, they're my family, so they're tough. No, right. these the right. toughest cat I've ever known. And my my first art teacher was my Uncle Steve. My mm. father's, he was second oldest to my father. My first art teacher was my Uncle Steve. And the year I was born, he was on the cover of GQ magazine. Wow. He, I had to call him Mr. Manson in class. <sighs> At that time, for whatever personal things my mom and pop was going through, my uncle Steve stepped in and was more my father than my, you know, was more an active part of my life than my father was. I ain't gonna say he was more my father than my father. He was, he was more active in my life than my father was. Understood. Uh, as his other, as my uncle, as my uncle Clarence was as well. Um. But my uncle Steven, I would go, me and my brother would go hang out with him. He had a fly apartment over on Camden Waterfront. He had a lime green Camaro, you know what I'm saying? All this 
his 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 decor was like black and gold Egyptian, mm -hmm. you know, super fly, right? Um, my pop when I was like maybe eighteen, me and my pop hanging out. He said, and we were talking about my uncle Steve, and he said, yeah, you know your uncle Steve was gay, and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what? I ain't even tripping, Bobby. He's like. He's like, Mark, come on. The lime green Camaro. He's like, he's like all of the black and gold with the cats and stuff in the house. <laughs> you know, but as a and, kid, and, no. Listen. But he, as was kids, also, we he was also an artist. So, you know, when I was with when I was with him, it was just create central. Mm -hmm. And he was just my and he was my uncle. So again, right. my point is is like those tough dudes, one, they loved. Their brother to just the only it's the only time I've I've out of I saw my pop cry three times. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I ever saw him cry was when when him and his brothers had to carry their brother. Mm -hmm. And their their gay brother that was murdered, right? Mm -hmm. So this is who I come up under. Like so I come up under men who love the human experience. We, we love it, we give joy to it. I allow everybody human experience. But when it comes to these children, mm. I, I don't see why we have to push that on them because it wasn't pushed on, it's been around, it wasn't pushed on us. So why do we have to push that on them? Let them be kids, just let them be mm -hmm. kids. You know, and because that's uh, that's the other part of the imagery, because not only are the black women under attack, their image under attack, black men, our mm -hmm. image is always under attack. Agreed. You know, Agreed. and now, now it's not even, uh, uh, you know, it's not even proper to be a whole man. Yeah. You know, even even now when I'm talking about mm -hmm. it, I'm hesitant in how I'm trying to say it because I don't mm -hmm. want to offend nobody. And I don't want to I don't want any I don't want anything to a word to trigger somebody who who may not have the, the wherewithal to actually think a whole thought through, you know, but I don't want a word to trigger somebody into thinking, oh my God, he's a fault. No, I'm not. I love mm -hmm. people. All people and some of my favorite people in the world are queer. Mm -hmm. And and the most phenomenal, you know, like, like Kyle, you don't understand. Like, I'm low man on the totem pole. My brothers, my cousins, like, yeah, I got a little wars, whatever. Like my my young, my brother Kaylin, my younger brother Kaylin speaks like seven languages. He wow. sounds like Pavarotti when he when he sings. Mm. He's a he's a he's a maestro. He's a a, a, a concerto. Um, most fabulous cat I know. Super fly, you know. Him and his husband got a Victorian manor up in Connecticut. Wow. And uh, he's he's the second. This happened maybe a few weeks ago. He's the second black uh, maestro to conduct the the. Uh, uh, was it v v v Requiem? Okay, uh, you know, something not you know, something right. I'm not it's, familiar, it's, it's but okay, stuff. okay, right? He but it, at Carnegie Hall, wow, the, the only other black conductor maestro that did, did it in 1972, the year I was born. So, like, I'm low man on the totem pole. Like, when I like, I my my brothers, my cousin, you know, my cousin Toy graduated from Columbia, my you know. Tremaine graduated from UNC Chapel Hill. My older brother, Monte, this cat became a fireman at 46 years old. Who does that? You know, like these are the cats, you know, my mom, uh, you know, is, she don't stop. We try and keep up with her, you mm -hmm. know? So I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't walk with that. I don't walk with that, that, that pain. You know, I don't, for some reason, I've never walked with that pain through all of this pain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Through all of these things. And I've realized that that's, that's probably my part, part of my responsibility because I see the beauty in things. 
you know, even a Mr. Ugly, I know how to, I see the beauty in it. So, and I somehow I know how to express it, but I don't, I never stop seeing the beauty in it. You know, like, and I don't, there's, I'm not afraid of nobody's neighborhood. I'm not afraid of nobody. And not in the naive sense, I'm genuine. So when I come at, when I, when I come in a person's energy, there's nothing ingenuine there. And I, I, I just want to get to a place where we get these boys clubs back open so we can get these, these boys oh. and these girls something to do so they can get back in contact with their character. Right. Cause that's when it's going to change. Okay. You know, that's, you know, when, when they stop teaching the tests and they actually admit that compulsory education is the worst thing, you know, that they could do when it comes to freeing minds. Sure, mm -hmm. it's brilliant when it comes to making every, everybody autonomous. You know, so, you know, the, oh it, it, the plot continues. We keep doing the work. We keep doing the work. Oh my goodness. Let me, let me tell you something. Everything that you just shared. I can't even say you dropped a pearl. That was a whole novel right there. Um, family, if you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. Gary Bryant writes, keep speaking truth in all caps, brother, and about mm. 10 exclamation marks uh, mm -hmm. with the 100 there. I, I really, I can't even, I can't even express how much I appreciate what you just shared. I'm I'm going to uh, try to put you on the spot and ask you if you could recite something for us. But 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 I'm open to you saying no, not tonight. But I'm going to give you a chance, just a moment, to think about it while we take just a short commercial break. Um, family, please stay with us because we'll be right back. This WURD public service announcement is a reminder that every voice and every vote counts. We are committed to keeping you informed and we encourage you to participate in the process. This is Charles Ellison, host of Reality Check on WURD. More than two thirds of all poll workers are 61 years of age or older. That's created a serious poll worker shortage as older poll workers are understandably nervous about health risks during pandemic. If you or someone you know under the age of 40 is looking for part-time work and is interested in contributing to their community, sign up to be a poll worker today. In Pennsylvania, go to votespa.com, click on Be a Poll Worker, and complete an application. Keep following us at OnWord on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Forward, and hashtag Word on Politics for constant updates. This PSA is a part of Every Voice, Every Vote a collaborative project of the LenFest Institute for Journalism with lead support provided by the William Penn Foundation. Learn more at www.everyvoice-everyvote.org. Editorial content is created independently of the project's donors. Tune in every Saturday at 4 p.m. for the Did You Know Show with host Bryant Green right here on WURD 96.1 FM and 900 AM. April is National Poetry Month. That cat's that, but that ain't love, ain't love, that ain't satisfaction, that be that rap rap, that rap, that sappy do that, it ain't love if cat don't slap, that be that in fat, that be that cat be love if you ain't cat's doormat, cat's cat, but it ain't love if cat a street rat, be that fat pockets cat, be that hustling cat, be that cat with permanent plats, no dax, that bad cat dance with death getting quick spats war gash on his back be that cat scat with rap to snap your back and daughter that cat too black too much attitude that cat like to slap that cat scat lyrics cat keep you fat like that like daddy but mama no flag he be that rat -a tat tat on my window he got me doing mathematics be that tap tap dancing slick cat taps on my window on bare black back you got me cat with permanent Class. That's vintage poetry from Yolanda Wisher on WURD, progressive black talk media. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, progressive black talk media.
Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive Black talk media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. We're talking with none other than Lamar, the legendary Black Ice Manson, who's been sharing so to, much with shout us. Shout out to Yolanda Wisher, too. Shout out. Out, shout yeah, out. Yeah. That's OG right there. I love that. I love that. I love the love. I just love the love. I, I have to tell you, I mean, I so while we were uh, at commercial, I texted Lamar just saying thank you for being you. Thank you just for sharing you, for being your oh. unapologetic, authentic self. You always have been. You are, you know, as long as I've known you, I don't know another Lamar. And um, I appreciate you for that. I really do. I appreciate uh, you for that. Now, family, it's all right with me if he tells me no. But I'm going to ask um, if you wouldn't mind reciting a poem for us. Now, I know we didn't discuss this. We didn't talk about it. But I would love, yeah. love, 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 love that right now. And I'd love to be able to share that with our family members. Oh, absolutely. I, I did want to say before I do this poem real quick. Okay. Um, a lot of times, right, especially like poets and, you know, uh, uh, men and women who are charged with the responsibility of, um, you know, of, of presenting good, you know, presenting good, right? Mm -hmm. And being what we are, we, we are images. We do um, shape perception because mm -hmm. we are in the public eye. And I never want, you know, and a lot of times, especially with poets, it's like, you know, because we we write these these very profound things, it'll it'll sometimes come off like we're like we're perfect. Like we know everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I just wanted to point out like I don't because sometimes I feel like, well dang, you know what? I don't never really get to talk about my flaws. Mm -hmm. I don't never really get to talk about my 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 missteps and you know, I could talk about the father, the, the the great father that I am, but I also can talk about the the father that the father in me that fell short, you mm -hmm. know, on mm -hmm. that, you know, or that falls short, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a it's a constant learning thing. So I'm not perfect by a long shot. I'm not, you know, I'm my worst critic. I've just I pay attention to my lessons and I accept them and I'm accountable. And and then I just try to be better. I make every attempt to be better. And as I've gotten older, it's just imperative that I I love everything, you know. So, uh, and for in light of what we was all saying, but what we've been talking about, or what I've been running my mouth about, no. um, it's what happens? Girl. What happens in neighborhoods where the self esteem has been overshadowed by the decay? and the children no longer play the way they used to. Where young boys choose to follow figures that had no father figures, a place where lives have been reduced to mere names on my wall. A lot of dead shames on my wall because most of my childhood friends died over some dumb ish. It's like we all on some slum ish. Whatever happened that we shall overcome ish. Where I'm from, hmm. They done took away boys clubs and neighborhood sports. It's a place where little boys put on jerseys and shorts, dream big about stardom on fine hardwood courts, but awake to the harsh reality of the stripped unfinished inner city floor where life's winners. Cold winners are sheltered by crack houses instead of recreational centers that they claim to not have the paper to keep open for operation. The deconstruction of the black family has been in perpetuation ever since Willie Lynch set his theory in motion. Decharacterization was his sole promotion. Therefore, if you take the basketball out of his face and put the coke in his place, he'll still score. What's a young boy to do when he, has, when he doesn't want to do wrong, but there's a lock on the right door? When he has the heart of a soldier, the aggression of a prize fighter, but no one's taught him what to fight for. See, most of our families are fatherless and quite poor, so we miss out on meals as well as kisses and hugs. You've got the audacity to cut the funding for the facilities that keep us off the streets, then ask us why we sell drugs. But imagine if we put down our dice and guns, picked up our daughters and sons, and put a little love right there where the hate is. Imagine if we had the chance to become accountants before being taught what the difference between wet and dry weight is. Imagine if these little inner city kids 
had the same type of schools that these rich kids had way out there in the sticks. Imagine if we had the chance to learn chemistry for real before we learned how to whip seven and a half out of six. Imagine if that little black girl could go to that dance school for free and love the dream of that Broadway show. Imagine if she wasn't forced into a game where you assume a filthy name and put your soul and your ass up for show. Imagine if she was taught to love herself, imitate no one, demand and demonstrate respect when she walks through the door. Imagine if she watched the telly and saw herself during the primetime hour instead of the four o'clock video war. Imagine. Mm. Thank you so much for having me, Carol. Lamar, I just love you. You have no idea. I love you back. You have no idea, the, family. The world, the, the world doesn't know <laughs> that the first time I saw Carol Riddick was <sighs> was down on what was that Fourth Street? What was that little jazz it was bar? The Blue in the Note. Board. It in was the yeah, in the Blue Board. Note. It was the Blue Note in Blue the Board Building. And so I'm about two, three rows back, and Carol oh. gets up there. And she's singing Anita Baker rap. I was just telling my sister this story. Oh my gosh. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, people will argue with me, but for about half a verse, half of that second verse, you ever said, she, we, she's just out of olive. Right? And it was like, you know, creative connection, that kind of thing. Long story tolerable, I went, I go right home. And a poem just fell out of me. And I wrote it and I said, all right, next time I see her, I'm gonna I'm give her this poem. And it wasn't no like crack on you poem. It was really just celebrating the, the gift that she had, you know, the gift that she has. And I was like, oh man, you know. And so I, when I seen you the next time I said, I said, hey, you know, I wrote this, you know, the yeah. last, you know, when the last time I saw you, I went home and, and this came out of me. So here, and it's the only copy of it. I still have it. I still oh, wow. have, it. yeah. Of course, well, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, I still so, have. So equally, you have always, you know, you have always been a, uh, oh. you know, a phoenix and one who just pushes, you know, behind. When it comes to Philly art, you, you know, you've been our anchor. You've been, you know, you've been our push. All, all on, even still, while you being phenomenally you, you no know, people, people don't know how much you do from the background. So oh I appreciate gosh. that and 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 thank you for that. I don't even know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, I can't say thank you enough. Family, I want to share with you, um, Lamar, some of the comments that our family members are saying about you. They're saying, um, Brother Lamar, Lily writes, Brother Lamar, your poem hit deep into my spirit and my soul. Oh, thank you. Nasir said, this was such a great show and you are a great guest. And Harry writes, yep, thanks for sharing, man. Inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just, I, can, I just can't say thank you enough. Um, you, you were more than I, for that, than, that I'd hoped. You were more than I'd hoped for tonight. You really, really were. Oh, and and uh, thank you. Uh, but I am, I'm pleasant. It's a pleasant surprise because we can, that's who you are. We can do it anytime. I'm, I'm down to talk about this stuff, you know, I mean, because some of my, I'm, that's, that's my job is to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one, I'm, I'm thankful that, that you are still, you, you are you and didn't, because a lot of, you know, a lot of people are just so, un, are so afraid mm -mm. to, uh, to, to speak truth. You know, uh, because of man, it'll, it'll you know they prove it. They'll, they'll kill you. They'll, they'll attempt to kill your career. They'll you know get Thank you me. bastardized. All that kind of thing. So I appreciate you. Uh, you know, not muting me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. you know, never that. Never that. Because it's, it's not. It's nothing ingenuine. I'm not. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing hateful in me at all. I, you know, it, I know that. I know, know that. I know. I appreciate that. you. I see that light. I've seen it. I, I have seen that light since the moment we met from the first day that we met. And that light has never dimmed. I love your vibration. And so family, you know, um, you know every, this time, every time I see you, every, and everybody says that when we see, when we, every time we see you, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, that's what it I'm, is. Gushy, right? Gushy. That's love. That's love. That's what you call that. That's love. That is love. When it's gushing and it tickles, 
is good. <laughs> Family. Oh my goodness. As we wrap up tonight's episode, episode, you know, I have to do this. I extend my utmost gratitude to you as you continue to support love and life. Special thanks to our guest, Lamar, the legendary Black Ice Manson, for sharing your time, your energy, your attention, and your gift with thank us. Um, thank you also to the entire WURD family. Special thanks, of course. Yeah, yeah. To Miss Kayla J for making sure everything runs smoothly. Family, we're all in this together. So be good to you, but be good to those around you. Have a great night and be sure to join me Monday through Thursday, 7 until 9 p.m. Eastern Time for another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Have a good night, y'all. Mother was very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign.